I'm um, Tony Horn, the founder of Think Differently. Um, we're based in Chelmsford. Um, we do cover the whole of Essex and London. Um, sometimes we do venture up, up north. Um, but the, the beauty of the business is that it can be done virtually as well, absolutely anywhere. Um, that's one thing I like about having Zoom and, and, and virtual interactions is that we can reach multiple locations. Um, and what do we do? So we are here to support businesses to really understand the importance of and embracing neurodiversity. Um, so there's several things that we do as a company. We do uh, lunch and learns um, and employee awareness um, webinars and workshops around neurodiversity and what it is and understanding the strengths, but also understanding the challenges. Um, we've got a half day uh, CPD certified uh, leadership and HR course as well. And the reason for this course is to help leaders understand how they can embrace neurodiversity within their business, but how they can support their employees to help them thrive um, by adapting their leadership and coaching style to be neuroinclusive. Um, we also do workplace assessments as well for those who are neurodivergent. If your organisation has an individual that feels that they can um, be supported through a workplace assessment to give them the tools that they potentially don't know that they need we do that as well um, and we offer a one-to-one -one coaching as well for those who identify as being neurodivergent to help them with some of those nuances and challenges that they may find in the workplace um, I think the awareness piece is, is definitely arisen um, I think lockdown um, made people more aware of their uh, differences of way, the ways that they like to work and the flexibility of um, having um, silence and downtime but I think with the you know the diversity inclusion piece that's the, on the increase um, I think people are, are, are probing more into um, what it looks like for those um, invisible disabilities now for those who identify as neurodivergent some of us don't identify as being dis disabled but for the um, under the equality act it's something that is a label there to protect us and I think companies are starting to understand that um, there is there are significant ways of embracing and using those different thinking minds to help corporations thrive um, if we look at uh, GCHQ for one which is our uh, security intelligence agency in the UK um, they actively advertise for those neurodivergent thinking styles because they recognize that they they recognize patterns differently to, to others and can see threat uh, quite visibly um, so it's about I think it's about embracing it but I also think social media has had a, a huge part in people connecting and talking about it and that's the biggest thing is about when you start connecting and understanding that your differences are not a default in personality, but there is actually something behind some of those challenges that you face daily. Um, it just allows you to um, accept that part of you a bit more easily. Um, and when you connect to a community who think and you can connect with, um, it's you start to not feel as alone as you possibly could have done um, previously to knowing or, or understanding um, your differences. Some people don't like to be labelled, and that's that's it, it, you really. We talk about preferences. Everybody has their own preference, um, whether they want to be labelled or not. Um, when it comes to neurodivergence, um, but it's understanding some of these people have coping mechanisms that they probably potentially don't know that they do, um, and actually it's probably a strength of theirs and a posit a positive way of doing things that they've done every day and not realise it's actually a good thing that they're doing and the way that they see things differently or the way that they can um, think outside the box and problem solving um, and actually understanding those strengths of yourself can really counteract some of the challenges that we have. So I think it's really important that people understand when there is when, when there's neurodivergence in, involved is about, OK, we can understand the challenges because there's, there's things that you can do to adapt and help people thrive by understanding those and help to do things differently, but also understanding how you can utilize their strengths um, and make them feel empowered to be who they are and to do things in a way that they feel natural. I actually worked for Barclays for 17 years um, and um, I was a leader and for the last three years of my career, um, I actually connected with a group 
Um, so I identify as dyslexic and autistic. I was diagnosed with uh, dyslexia at the age of 17. Um, and I was diagnosed with autism late January last year um, at the age of 40. So very late diagnosis. And that was only through the work that I did that I identified some of the things that possibly led to that that diagnosis. Um, but I connected with a group at Barclays that was a, a dyslexia support group. Um, and in that moment, I was surrounded in a room of 40 other people who had the same challenges, but also the same uh, way of thinking as, as I did. Um, and it was such a powerful moment for me because that was the first moment I didn't feel alone anymore. Um, I didn't, the imposter syndrome kind of moved a little bit because I could see there was um, more senior leaders within this group than I was. Um, and that was the moment that I, I decided to be open and honest about my dyslexia because I'd hidden it for 15 years. Um, it then led me to pursue and be part of the neurodiversity support group in Barclays, which I did that for three years. Um, and it made me realise that if such a large organisation was doing this only now, there is so many other smaller companies, less corporate companies, that this is not even on their radar and they have employees who are neurodivergent because one in seven of us are neurodivergent so by listening to people and understanding their challenges it led me to develop the cpt certified leadership training that was the first thing i did and that was purely from listening to others and how they felt they were being treated at work um and i felt like i needed to do something with that so it led me to to um create and think differently the rescuer i like to call it i think some of us are rescuers um, that we like to kind of rescue people but it, it's about um, making people feel seen for me um, more than anything and heard if I can if I if I can do an awareness training and one person comes forward and says I feel seen and I feel like I can talk about my differences at work now then that's a massive tick for me or if I can do a leader training and it changes somebody's style of leadership that can be more inclusive I know that's going to have an impact a group of people that are directly led by them um and for me that's a huge win um a grant <laughs> a grant to be able to um because uh, we're, we're a social enterprise company we're we're we're, we're, we're a cic um and i want to be able to get this out there more um i want to be able to go into um, you know, startups, organisations and say, this is your starting point for when you're employing. Um, this this is where, this is the things that you need to be doing differently to one, increase your productivity within, by just by understanding what you need to do and just be able to uh, support others in a more marginal way than I am at the moment. I think I, I unfortunately I don't I'm not in a, a position to do it enough um and I every time I go out and I'm in and I, I remember actually going to ambitious ambitious women and it was one of the better ones that I'd been to um because it was a room full of like-minded women who just wanted to get to know each other and uh, support and help each other and I think that's really important um I think every time you go out and network it's just about connecting with somebody. It's not about instant. It's not about business. It's about somebody knowing somebody who can help in one way or the other. Um, and that to me is more valuable than, you know, just winning business in, in these places. It's about making a circulation of, of connections that want to support and want to help each other. Um, I'm in another woman's um, business group and it's um, Be Your Own. Uh, group where we have a whatsapp group and every time somebody does something successful we celebrate it you know we share our success stories everybody gets involved to celebrate and congratulate that person um but every time we see something that might be able to help somebody we point them in the right direction and i think for me that's really important that we are trying to support each other in business um and that we want to see each other thrive and win um to me, I think you, you can't beat that um, experience. You can't beat that connection. Uh, women supporting women, I think, is it's there's there's not enough of it, and there should be more of it. When you're an entrepreneur, it's a lonely place. It's only you're, it's only you. So there's no one to celebrate your successes. You know, when you work for a large organisation, 
you get you know rewards and people talk about you or you get a pat on the back but when it's just you there is no pat on the back there is no external motivation so having a group that you can connect with where you motivate motivate each other that's the piece of the puzzle sometimes that you're missing so having that kind of group of people to do that with you I think is really needed um when it comes to you know starting a business I would say embrace failure as a stepping stone to success and stay resilient in the face of challenges it's something someone told me once because at the beginning of any startup um there is going to be failures along the way so if you can embrace it as a stepping stone um and stay resilient then you're going to be you, you you're going to be successful at some point my biggest inspiration was my father um my dad was my dad's dyslexic he was kicked out of school at 14 um he also has dyspraxia as well and his first business completely collapsed underneath him um but he then went out and built another one and he's now very 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 successful um i know he's now semi retired semi retired he's living the life of luxury um and i I've, I've watched him throughout the years and I would say that having someone as a role model like my father has inspired me to continue doing what I want to do. I would like to shout out Rachel Richards, who is the owner of Uniform 7. Um, I have worked, we've done quite a few projects together, but I think her mission um, for sensory um, school uniform is a huge one. Um, you know, I work with I work with neurodivergent adults and I understand their challenges as an adult. Um, I also have a neurodivergent child myself and I understand his sensory needs. So having somewhere or someone who is actively trying to make children comfortable at school so they can actually learn and concentrate on their learning rather than the feel of their clothes or how it impacts them. Um, I have huge um, admiration for that.